live down here at the Riverbend Community Center. Charlie, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, Jay? How you doing, man? We're good, man. Tell everybody what we got going on, man. I tell you what, right now, live at the Riverbender.com Community Center, we have the Company of Thieves from Chicago, Illinois. How are you guys doing? We're great. This is awesome. We just got out of the van. We drove through a huge rainstorm and came and had pizza with you happy folks. So it's <laughs> They sick. they risked our lives their lives for us, John. Yeah, yes. I risked but your but life. they got food. They, they got food though. So they got I guess, food. I guess, so I guess, I guess that's there. all that matters. And so. Sunny D. Yeah. <laughs> I want that purple stuff. Sorry. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> and so you guys are playing at Off Broadway tonight in downtown St. Louis. Yes. With, uh, with the with, wigs. With, with, with the wigs. You have a nice wigs T-shirt on. I know, right? That's sexy. Actually, I'm gonna start working with their merch guy because I'm such a fan of his work. But yeah, the wigs are awesome. They've been so great to us this whole time, and um, we watch their set every night. They're such a great rock and roll band. It's very cool. Well, we're, we're certainly excited to see you guys, and of course, excited for your live in-studio performance right here. But, uh, but first and foremost, uh, you know, you guys, obviously, if you don't know much about Company of Thieves, they're from, obviously, are from Chicago, and, and uh, their name, your guys' name comes from artists stealing from other artists, is that correct? No, no way. That, that was a rumor um, that I heard. Anyway. It, yeah, there's lots of rumors. It's hard to explain, <laughs> but we're, we're thick as thieves. And it's kind of, um, you know, it comes from an expression of in the company of great thieves, which uh, has kind of, I don't know, a dark, a dark mysterious feeling to it. And, um, you know, I don't know, we've been through a lot as a band. And, and so, yeah. I think it's just a way of paying tribute, saying that we all come from something and we all uh, are not afraid to say that, you know, we're inspired and influenced by many artists and other things in life and just our way of, you know, this is our version of these things that we've learned along the way and not, we're not trying really hard to be different or deep, we're just being ourselves and that comes from, you know, all the influences and, and situations and experiences you have in your life. That's cool, man. I was thinking more of Aladdin. When I, every time I hear thieves, I just, I just, I jump, I just jump straight to Aladdin. I'm, I'm not supposed to be here. Um, but <laughs> so you guys are from Chicago, so you know about like Lollapalooza and everything. Like, have you guys played that, right? Yeah, last summer. Yeah, how was that experience? It was wild. It was like four thousand people, and it rained, and we had this stage, the Sony Bloggy stage, that was kind of uh, nestled in this forest of trees. So it kind of became like our fort. And all these people came in to see us, and it was, it was almost like, you know, a little bit off the beaten path. So everyone who was there, it was like a, I don't know, it was fun. Yeah. And we, we collaborated with a dance troupe who really? did a routine to Oscar Wilde, and it was just crazy. Yeah. Oscar Wilde is my song. Does that, that mean that much more to you to perform that in, in front of your home audience there in Chicago? I mean, it's Lollapalooza for all Definitely. that. Definitely. The timing worked out perfectly because we just finished recording our record. seeing our friends and family at this fest that we've been fans of for years and we're finally a part of too and get to check out Arcade Fire that night and it was just it was a wow. really good way to come home you know for that weekend yeah and that festival has always been really important to that city it employs so many people mm -hmm. and especially right now with the economy and everyone's having a hard time getting a job like a lot of people that weekend were able to you know buckle down and, and get some work done so I think that was really cool this last year well yeah, speaking cool. of you guys playing live let's go ahead and hear a live song all right this is pressure from our debut album ordinary riches <laughs>
did not want it to end. <laughs> I, I got I got chills. Oh, I got geez. chills literally. Yes. Jeez Louise, that's yes, that crazy. was so good. Oh. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, yeah. I, I heard it earlier today and I was like, uh, so are they gonna do that tonight? Uh, if not, no, I gotta stab somebody. Um, <laughs> so you guys played that or uh, at Daryl's house, right? Now how was did, yeah, did. yeah, now how was like how was that experience? I mean being at Daryl or or yeah. Yeah, at Daryl Hall's house. Yeah. It was totally surreal. He has two houses, actually. Uh, one's from the 17th century and one's from the 18th century, and he put them together somewhere in, like, you know, the woodlands, rural area of upstate New York. And we were greeted by him and, like, half of his family who were making ribs and corn and all this yummy stuff. And he was just, like, super down-to-earth, rugged dude who had this incredible band of, like, very, you know, high caliber musicians that were just so good that we could just like very easily, you know, relax and yeah, do our yeah. thing and not worry about anything. And they all just like, they played some of our songs with us and we played some of Daryl Hall's songs with him. And was Oats there? It was just like a jam session. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, we were really nervous and they made us feel right at home. Everyone locked the door, just like yeah. hanging out with your friends all day, talking about music and eating food. Kind of like, like here. It was like, yeah. <laughs> it was kind of reality TV setup. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we got out of the car and, you know, right when we got out of the car, this, like, crew of cameras and people with microphones were, like, snaking microphones up our shirts. And, okay, reshoot that again. Yeah, and I was like... Get out the car again. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, well, what's going on I know, here? I was like, what's going on? I was like, I have to pee. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, unplug it. No, that's so not... But no, that, that, that's pretty awesome. And, uh, of course, Pressure was on your Ordinary Riches album that came out in 2007. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that album... That album title actually you got from an Oscar Wilde quote, mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to bait you into playing that song too because we all love that song, of course. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I, no, no, that, that's, that's impossible. You can't let me down. Yeah. Uh, but you but um, how, cool. how much how much of an influence uh, was some of that on your record? Because uh, I noticed that you guys are influenced by Oscar Wilde. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think in general. Uh, you know, his influence kind of comes in um, with me personally and, and feelings of, you know, sometimes being ostracized for being yourself and speaking your mind and um, being, you know, accepted and, and welcomed into a circle because, oh, you're an artist, you're a musician, and it's something that people kind of, you know, have always since the beginning of time really been fond of, but then maybe your personal life or some of your own personal beliefs or decisions you know, you get highly, highly judged for them when you've been welcomed in because of your art. And so um, that kind of has always influenced me, um, feeling like life is just way too short to worry so much about what other people are going to think ultimately about your own person. So, um, you know, on this new record, there's, there's a lot more of his influence again in the song called King of Dreams, where I kind of um, talk about themes of, you know, being someone who's a performer on display in a circus type of atmosphere where you kind of feel like this monster or this lion in a cage, you know, and you're just like, ah, I'm a wild creature. Let me out. Right, yeah. Let me out of this place, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think he will probably be coming in and out of my life all throughout my life, I would say. Okay, well, since we, uh, since we talked about it, I don't know if you guys. I don't know if you guys want to. I mean, it. You know, since you're such a big influence and everything. I was, it, oh wow! Yeah, play, I didn't play that. Which one? Pick this stuff. Whatever you guys want to play. Yeah. New song. New song. New song. Delta communication. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Actually, to tie this in so that it's not just jumping all around, um, this song, Death of Communication, is absolutely about the same type of thing. It's about speaking your mind and being honest and having that honesty be thrown back at you as, as something that, you know, is judged because sometimes people just cannot deal with the truth and how, you know, just because you have uh, your own feelings doesn't mean that you should... Um, adapt or, or change to others so that you can 
be, you know, quote, successful or happy mm. or, or not lonely. Because sometimes um, in being alone, there is the greatest company when you just really listen to your, yourself and your guts. That's what this song is about. Company of Thieves and Death of Communication, their brand new single off their brand new album due out May 17th called Running From a Gamble. Yeah. We are excited for that new album. That song is, that's really huge for us. Our um, station manager dances to it in this office by mm -hmm. himself. <laughs> is that like, from, did you guys tweet that today? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I think we probably did. Somebody said yeah. there, he just dances somebody yeah. said that their, song. Their on his desk. Somebody said turns into a major dance party. <laughs> That's what, that's, that's, that's what happens. That's what happens in his office, nonstop. <laughs> uh, and we talked a little bit about your uh, first album, Ordinary Riches. Uh, 
going into this album, was there like a big transition for you guys in your songwriting? Um, I think yes. Um, it became a lot more focused and a lot darker. And, um, you know, it's, it's a result of us touring all around this country for the past couple years and, and all of the feelings that we have felt being exposed to, you know, the world around us and the people that we've met along the way and their stories. And um, I, I think, I don't know, lyrically it's a lot more confrontational and um, a lot, uh, what, it, it, digs, it digs deeper for me personally and um, I don't know, what about like musically, the differences? Well, the, the first album was the first time we ever wrote songs, really. You know, so uh, I guess this was all the space and time from that first exploration of songwriting to, you know, listening to more music and growing up, at, you know, personally in the world and growing as a writer and a player. So we have all this time that we've, that we've had from you know, the first album where we, where we didn't really think we knew what we were doing at all, we just kind of just wrote how we knew at the time and now we were able to collect all these thoughts and ideas and experiences and, and, uh, and life lessons and musical lessons and try to apply them to better songwriting and more focused songs and um, it was good. It was good to be able to tour and try different things out and learn how you are as a player and how you interact with the, the dynamic of a band. And, it was, it, was built, it was great to flesh them out on tour and come home and work them out in the basement. And I, I, th I think we, uh, we, got them, we got them to be a point, got the songs to, be, to be, get to this point where we're very comfortable with you know, sharing them with people and, and uh, they represent our current state of where we're at in our lives where our first record was kind of like, you know, it's true, you have your whole, right, your whole life to write your first album and that's exactly what happened. And, <laughs> yeah. and this is who we are right now, you know, so it's, it's very relevant for, the, for right now for us. Yeah. And we're excited too because the new album captures our live energy much more. And um, yeah, everyone in our band um, had so much to bring to the table and there's so much um, exploration sonically with different sounds and tones. And um, you know, there's a lot of like really colorful stuff going on with the keys and, and the bass and things like that. So it was cool. really great for us. So now, are you, can you guys play one more? Yeah. Please. yeah. Uh, we went, but we, uh, what about something from the new album that we haven't even cool. sure. discovered before? All right. Let's yeah. try that. Or zero. Or do you do Oh, no. What do we do? Are we live? Do you guys know the song Syrup? Have you ever heard that song? Do you know the song Syrup? It's brand new to us. Let's do it. Okay. Let's yeah. Do it. yeah. It's called Syrup.
on the way down, on the way down. I know I made a mistake because I missed you. I still do, I still do, I still do. I know I made of Thieves there. Uh, your, your new season's coming out May 17th, right? Yes. And you're going to be at Off-Broadway tonight. Tonight. Exactly. So if you're able to go to that show tonight, I don't know why I'm talking <laughs> like that anymore. Uh, they go to that show. Uh, guys, please, please, everyone, please give it up. Company of Thieves. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, we wanted to tell you as well, um, please come tonight, and if you can't, then we're coming back in June, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. The, the June, yeah, they're coming back to the fire burn in yeah. June. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yes. Go to. 